Hey everybody, welcome to this video. Today I want to follow up on the video I did a few weeks ago around the Ubiquity kit that I bought for my home network. Now I have, if you didn't catch that video, a Ubiquity Dream Machine Pro. I have two long range Wi-Fi Ubiquity access points and I also have a Ubiquity 8 port PoE or power over ethernet switch and um, that has up to 150 watts of power that it can be used to draw. Um, throughout my house I have scattered this equipment and configured it so that we have better Wi-Fi coverage and also I have installed some ethernet cabling into the house as well into the office here and um, to enable me to get better configuration and better performance um, within the office when I'm working here as well. So what I'm going to show you is a tour around where all the equipment is and um, where it's all configured, how I've set it up and then we'll, we'll join back. So here we are in the little cupboard where my broadband actually terminates and in here what I've done is actually set up the Ubiquity Dream Machine. Now I have wall mounted it with a 1U bracket so a server bracket. Um, it is unfortunately a little bit squinty due to the fact that the cupboard is really awkward to get a drill into and measure because it's not deep enough it's quite a shallow cupboard. But here we have the broadband that's terminated into the house and I have directly connected my broadband into the Ubiquity Dream Machine. I don't have the provider's third party router or device in between. It's just directly from the connection into the Dream Machine, which is phenomenal, which means that I'm not having to hop through another machine, which I thought I might have to. So this red cable here is actually a connection that will help me connect my loft to this dream machine and allow me to have connectivity upstairs. This connection actually goes outside and I'll show you that in a minute, um, but it's my way of trying to do this without actually having to drill in between walls and do too much internal work to make all of this work for me. In here, we also have uh, my power over ethernet um, connection. So because the Dream Machine does not have power over ethernet capabilities, I've had to buy a power over ethernet injector, which will help power my access point. And I've kind of tried to tidy it up a bit um, here by mounting it on the wall, the, the PoE injector. And we can see that that connects up into the ceiling. So if we shoot right up, you can see that the access point is there in the wall. So quite handy and um, not too much work in terms of cabling that into the environment. In this cupboard, we also have the connections for some other devices. So my Philips Hue lighting is connected here and you'll see that small box at the bottom. So I've also got a couple of ethernet ports that the house builder built in to the house. Those are cat five cables, which I'm a bit disappointed about because everything else uh, with my new setup is cat six. But those two connections go into our main bedroom and our living room and are plugged into TVs in the house. Now to enable me to get connectivity and provide a bit more cabling upstairs, what we've done is we've drilled outside. Because that cupboard is on an outside wall of the house, we could drill directly outside and we've taken the cable along the house on the outside. It's um, external Cat6 cable that we've used and we've kind of hidden it here inside this piping and trunking and we've run it up the drain pipe. So it's hidden, the cable is hidden. Um, that white cable is actually my satellite dish, but the cable then goes into my loft and I can then get a bit of, and a bit of cabling, physical cabling into my loft and into the upstairs. So that cable that runs up my drain pipe and into my loft, terminates here into this switch and gives me more connectivity upstairs. This switch will run my CCTV box and it also runs the access point, um, the second one that we have on the upstairs here. And it also gives me the connectivity to the four ethernet ports that I now have in my office. This is an old video that I took of it. This switch runs really hot. So what I've since done since taking this video is actually buy one of those laptop cooling stations and uh, put that under it to give it a bit more cooling and trying to keep it at a reasonable temperature. So in terms of what that means when we look at the Ubiquity setup, we can see in this topology design that we have a bunch of Ubiquity equipment and we have a bunch of clients connected to them. Now, if we zoom in a little bit, 
On the left hand side we have that dream machine that we saw mounted in the cupboard and we've got the Philips Hue light connected directly to that. We've also got the switch that's directly connected to that through that outside cable. And we can see from the solid lines that we have the physical wired connections from the switch to certain devices. And then through the dotted lines, we can see that we've got on the upstairs um, access point, we have a bunch of clients connected to it. Now, the topology design is slightly skewed. I don't know why the downstairs access point is not physically connected to the dream machine. And we can see that in the topology mapping. I'm not sure about that. Um, but we can see that the downstairs access point has a bunch of clients connected to it. And um, we can see whether the connections are through Wi-Fi 4, Wi-Fi 5, Wi-Fi 6. If we scroll in a little bit, we can see, for example, my PlayStation is connected using Wi-Fi 5 and it has a fairly good connection with a 99 up to 99% connection. If we find one of my Wi-Fi 6 um, connections, so this is my mobile phone, my Samsung mobile phone, and it's connected to, through Wi-Fi 6 technology um, and has a fairly good connection as well with 91%. So yeah, that's my setup. That's the configuration of where I put all the various di different bits of Ubiquiti equipment around my house. Um, what I actually want to show you is using the Wi-Fi Man application that Ubiquiti have launched that you can use on your mobile phone to do a bunch of different features. I want to show you the coverage that I'm getting and how it actually performs on my mobile phone. So let's dive into that screen and we'll show you what the coverage of these two long range access points actually looks like. So using the Wi-Fi Man application on my phone, I'm gonna show you the signal strength throughout the house and outside as well. So this is me outside at the furthest end of my garden. There is no seat in here and we can see we still have a bit of a signal. As I start to move closer to the house, I'm getting a, a stronger signal on the patio area, which is where I would actually try and do some work, to be honest. And you can see the longer that I stand there, the better the signal kind of gets. As I actually go into the house and start to move around the kitchen, and actually start to get into the utility room where the access point and the Dream Machine Pro are located, you can see the signal strength is getting much better. And when I'm standing right under the access point, you can see the signal strength is quite good. As I again start to move around the downstairs house, the signal cont continues to be quite good and quite strong throughout. As I start to move upstairs, I'm still getting a consistent signal from that downstairs access point. At this point, sometimes my phone flips over to the upstairs access point. Sometimes it stays connected to the downstairs access point. So there's a good overlap and um, potentially there's too much overlap. I may have to tweak that, but you can see I have a good signal throughout the house as I wander through. Now I actually think this signal mapper did this on the Wi-Fi 4 connection where my phone actually has Wi-Fi 6 capabilities so I need to probably run this test again and see if it's a better signal if I'm running Wi-Fi. So overall I am quite pleased with how the Ubiquiti equipment is performing in the house. Definitely noticed much more stability across all of my devices and um, taking some of my devices into a cabled structure. So I now have my PC and laptop here in the home office attached through um, a physical ethernet cable and that has definitely increased my performance here and it's also freed up a lot of the other network in terms of the Wi-Fi band as well because my husband's working at home these days on a Wi-Fi um, on his laptop and me being on the Wi-Fi as well was just happening at some times when I was doing live streaming or trying to stream a video or trying to download some things or even upload files. It was just hammering my, my performance and hampering his as well. It's definitely improved the situation for my gaming as well. So my PS4, my PlayStation 4 um, is in the living room and I didn't have an ethernet cable that can be attached to that. So it was on Wi-Fi and with the Amplify Wi-Fi that I had before, I would often experience connection dropouts. It would definitely drop out and I would have to reset the PlayStation and then join again, which was really um, annoying and frustrating when you were 
in a good game of Call of Duty or something and you lost all of your score because of the dropped out connection. I've definitely noticed that it's a much faster on my PlayStation now even though I'm still using Wi-Fi and I've only experienced one dropout in the whole time that I've had this new Ubiquiti equipment for the last two or three weeks and um, so that's much proved performance. I don't obviously have stats around any of that it's just my gut feeling and my own personal knowledge of the network at home that has helped me realise that this has been a worthwhile project. Now I got asked about costs and to be honest I never covered it in my last video I definitely should have covered it. So in terms of the equipment that I bought, the Ubiquiti equipment, um, the Dream Machine, the two access points and the Switch, we're talking about 820 UK pounds. Now that is a lot for networking, that is a lot of equipment. Um, I definitely do think it was worth it. Like I said, the performance in certain areas within the house has definitely improved, so I think it was definitely worth it. Um, there was also additional cost because I got someone in to actually install that Ubiquiti kit or to install the Ethernet trunking that I needed to from inside the house up to the loft and then do the actual cabling here in the office. So we're probably talking easily over a thousand pounds for the equipment and the setup of all of the all of that. You could um, definitely save some money by doing the install if you're doing cabling yourself. I nearly went down that route, to be honest. I thought about doing it, but I didn't have all the tools that I needed in order to drill holes and pull cables through various different locations. So um, as we were upgrading the CCTV at the same time, I found somebody that could not only do the CCTV upgrade, but could also do the networking at the same time. And it paid dividends because within a day, everything was working in terms of CCTV and my new networking. And the chap was really good. He's from a company called RH Elliott Limited here in Scotland. I would definitely recommend him because he tidied up behind himself. He didn't leave a mess. It looked um, pristine and everything's working first time. So really pleased with the experience. Um, there are some things that I'd like to cover in the next video about things I've learned about the Ubiquiti setup and how um, I've had to maybe tweak some things and look at some things, but I'd love to cover that in another video. But Hopefully you've enjoyed seeing how my Ubiquiti equipment is set up within the house and it gives you some inspiration about how potentially you could set up something similar yourself. Do hit me up in the comments um, and let me know if you have any questions and we can definitely cover them in future videos as well.